Hi there, Doug Stumann with IT Creations. We got the Lenovo P520C years ago and did a video, one and a half to be exact, but we never did get a ThinkStation P520. I always knew we would get one, eventually. Turns out Lenovo offered and I grabbed it. I thought it might be interesting to review because we got the P620 Threadripper workstation the same week and both have a single processor. The P520 supports Intel's Xeon W series processors and the P620 is outfitted with AMD's newest Threadripper Pro WX series processor. The P520, just like the P620, is for special effects, graphic design, 3D modeling, machine learning, and animation. Let's take a look. Compared to our previous video of the Lenovo ThinkStation P520C, which was posted in May of 2019, and you can see that here, this P520 was an elusive beast, as David Attenborough might say. It's really not, but I'm kind of surprised we never got one. Whatever. Soon it has a single processor just like that new P620, but this one features a single Intel W processors, and both the P620 and P520 use the exact same case, but definitely different motherboards. And the ports front and back are different as well. From performance standpoint, it sits above the P330 and the P520C, and then there's the P620, just released in October of 2020, that offers much more performance, but still a single processor. I digress. On the front of the chassis are two media bays, or flex bays as Lenovo calls them, and a small control panel to the right. One of the flex bays is outfitted with a full-width optical drive. The control panel features a power on button, four USB 3.1 ports, and a mic and headphone jack combo port. The media bays will support several options, including a 15-in-1 card reader, slimline optical drive, additional storage, or an optional Thunderbolt 3 Type-C port for large but quick data transfers. Oh, and that Lenovo logo you could previously pull out and rotate to change the orientation if you want to position the unit on its side, it doesn't do that anymore. But given aesthetics are not what you were purchasing the system for, it's not a deal killer. Are you interested in one of these Lenovo ThinkStation P520s? Or perhaps a high-performance GPU? If that's the case, then visit IT Creations. We have a huge selection of Lenovo ThinkStations to choose from and can custom configure to your specifications and set it out for next day delivery. Custom configured, quickly delivered. On the back of the system are several ports, including two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard, with a knockout just below that for an optional VGA port. Then there are six USB ports and four USB 3.1 and two USB 2.0, plus an RJ45 gigabit ethernet port, which doubles for remote management of the system. Then three ports for audio in, line in, line out, and a microphone port. Below those are the PCI slots for optional components. To power the system, you can choose from a 690 watt, 900 watt, or 1000 watt PSU. If you plan on installing more than one high-performance GPU, then opt for the 900 watt or 1000 watt versions. Cracking open the case, you can see the active heatsink at the top of the system with an integrated fan. It sits on top of that single Intel Xeon W processor, delivering four to 18 cores of delight. Intel Xeon W processors are designed specifically for workstation applications, providing great performance with built-in security features and tested reliability. Our platform here is running a single Intel Xeon W2225 CPU with four cores running a base frequency of 4.1 gigahertz with an eight megabits of cache. Compare that to the Intel Xeon W2295, which offers the most cores of the W series lineup at 18 cores with 24.75 megabits of cache, a base frequency of 3.0 gigahertz and a turbo boost frequency of 4.6 gigahertz. To either side of the CPU are eight memory module slots that can support up to 512 gigabytes with all memory module slots loaded with 64 gigabyte registered memory modules. The Lenovo P520C only supports half the memory of the P520 at 256 gigabytes with only four memory module slots. With only four memory channels and eight memory module slots, our system came with four 32 gigabyte modules for a total of 128 gigabytes. That would also be using only a single memory module in each memory channel for the best performance. You'll also notice red bars or touch points within the chassis that indicate removable components for easy tool list component removal and upgrades. Remember all those stupid apps you get along with your new system? Well, they've been reduced in number, thankfully. Lenovo Vantage is Lenovo's new application to help you manage your P-Series system, providing driver updates and diagnostics. Addressing the BIOS will also enable you to change the boot order, which we did, so we could run the system with Windows 10 using an external SATA SSD drive. We used the same drive to boot the P620 for our Cinebench and 3D Mark tests. So same, same in that respect. Storage on the system is listed at 36 terabytes using six 3.5 inch hard disk drives in each storage bay. And that includes the two standard drive bays inside plus the optional drive cage with two bays plus one drive in each of the flex bays. I'm always hesitant to add this information on max storage capacity because it's usually wrong. 
but moving on. Apparently for SSDs, the value is a little less at only 30.5 terabytes and includes all the bays I just mentioned, plus six M.2 SSDs and one PCIe add-in card. I'm not sure where all these M.2 drives are installed since they mention an AIC card for that last one, which I find confusing. Let's move on. There are two integrated M.2 slots on the system board with a small heatsink. You can use the M.2s as your boot device and RAID them together for even greater performance. Virtual RAID on CPU or VROC is also supported using the VROC key and is designed for RAIDing SSDs like those M.2 drives. You can also add a few more M.2 drives using the PCI slots and there are options for four, two, and a single M.2 for a total of nine. SATA drives are supported natively and can be rated using the integrated storage controller. For SAS drives offering 12 gigabit per second speed, you will need a PCI HD RAID controller. And there are a few options, including one offering four gigabytes of cache. One of the differences on these newer platforms is the absence of a backplane, which previously allowed for doubling up on those HD trays with two hot plug 2.5 inch drives in each tray. The trade-off, I suppose, are drives with higher capacities. So maybe you don't need that anymore. In all, there are six PCI slots on the system with two PCI 3.0 by 16 slots to support two double wide graphics cards with SLI or NVLink for greater performance. Of course, if you do add those double wide cards in, you only have two by four PCI slots to work with and forget about that quad M.2 drive, but you can still install a single M.2 PCI card in one of the remaining by four PCI slots because one of them may also be used for an optional Wi-Fi adapter card. In general, you can only install two GPUs, some of which like the higher end Quadro cards support SLI or NVLink, but you will need two cards for that to work. Our system came with a single RTX 8000. We did run some benchmarks for the system using Cinebench for the CPU and 3 Mark for the GPU. Granted, the processor only has four cores, so we didn't get any crazy results there, but CPU choice is also dependent on what you're planning on doing with the system, and you should determine if your favorite programs run better with multi-core processor or just a few cores. You decide. GPU performance is quite good, but not really surprising. It's an NVIDIA RTX 8000, which features the latest ray tracing capabilities for developers and designers. It's like it's quite fun for gaming too, which is where your GPU will show its true colors. For a single socket system, it's still more than many of us mere mortals need. Even with our four core processor, it offers very good performance for a mid-range system and offers impressive expansion potential for memory, storage, and additional assets through the expansion slots. If you enjoyed our short hardware review, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Things are starting to get interesting again with all the new hardware hitting the market. I've placed a few references in the description, and remember, if you're looking for servers, professional workstations, custom integrated workstations, or just parts and components, try IT Creations. Custom configured, quickly delivered. Until next time, I'm Doug Stimun with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.